Peter, I want to start with you because my understanding is that this script came after a bout of writer's block for you. What was going on and how did this story help you out of it? I, I, I wouldn't say I was blocked because I had jobs and I was doing those jobs, but I, had, I think I'd lost um, my confidence and I felt that, um, I, well, not to be political, but I felt after the election, I felt particularly helpless and, um, and at, very, at great variance with my, my family, not my immediate family, but my family that I grew up with that lives all over the country. And uh, I just felt that I needed, I, I just I wasn't telling stories I had to tell. And um, both of our boys were, are now men and they're raised and they're off in the world. And I felt, what if, what if I put all the energy that I've been putting into serving other work, which I, I'm proud of that work, but what if I looked really deep in myself and, and found something that I felt I had to make, as if this, if this would be the last thing I would make in the world, what, what would it be? And I looked at all of the projects I've been working on, and, and I knew I wanted to write about the heroin opioid epidemic. I'd lost too many people. We're losing too many people. But I also wanted to write a love story about uh, that uh, uh, a love where uh, someone won't give up on another person, and I thought it was going to be a sister with a brother, mm. and I was writing, and it was going fine, but the minute I said, "What if it? What if the person to go into the underworld w was this young man's mother?" Mm. It it just took off, and it started to write me. Julia, yeah. Thank God he changed it from sister to mom. No kidding. I mean, <laughs> there's only so much you can you do with a face <laughs> mask. <laughs> you can get Dewey, but you can't get 20. <laughs> what do you remember that it was that grabbed you when you read it for the first time? Well, I guess it was just, I thought, um, how incredible. And I don't think I've talked about this with Peter sitting right next to me. <laughs> Thank you, Peter. <laughs> But I just thought, how incredible that Peter has taken something that is this monster that has overcome, overwhelmed all of us in some way, and he has turned it into this human, fragile document, this one day, this one family. I just thought, how extraordinary. And as though that isn't interesting enough, he decided, he who seems so gentle, kind, and sensitive, oh, no. said, so scared. Mm, let's make it Christmas Eve morning to Christmas morning when there's nothing on anybody's family plate. <laughs> let's, let's put it there. And I just thought, God, this is so moving and incredible and in what everyone needs to be brought back into mm. a conversation that has gone on for so long that it's kind of gone away, I think. Yeah. Teddy, what did it take to make this financially viable? Was it Julia and Lucas Hedges? Was it the story? Was it a combination of all of the above? Uh, definitely a combination of all the above. Um, I mean, I think for... For our company, we try to look for projects that have meaning, that are adding something to the world, um, and yet also have some level of um, commercial potential uh, to sound somewhat crass. Uh, and I think this was a film that you read and you just sort of felt in a weird way, that it, it, had, um, it, it had something incredibly important to say just about um, the opioid crisis what's affecting families around America, around the world, and yet there's something incredibly relatable about the story, even if you don't have exposure to addiction, even if um, it's something else that affects your family. And I think watching as a mother or a parent does everything in their power in order to keep their family safe, in order to keep their family on track, um, even if you know that you can't actually affect that outcome 
it's such a relatable and human instinct. And it was something that maybe as a father of three, maybe just um, imagining Julia in that role, um, felt like something where you'd be able to deliver the underlying message of what this film was um, addressing, but do it with sort of a package that lulled people into a false sense of security. Mm -hmm. um, and I think from a, from a production standpoint, you know, it was looking at um, the body of work of Peter, who um, both as an exceptional writer and an incredibly talented director um, had done some really amazing work in the past. But I think it was really, it took, um, it took someone like Julia Roberts saying that this was important to her and that she was going to make the sacrifices that were necessary to make an independent film when she can do probably anything that, that she wants um, to say that this story matters. And I think without that, none of us would be sitting here. I was so surprised to learn that the casting of your son Lucas in the role was not kind of like this foregone conclusion. Like it was actually a process to agree to have him do it and to get him interested. And I think he kind of had to hear that actors that are in his peer group were reading it and thought it was a great script for him to think, oh, maybe I should do it. What oh, yeah. I, mean, I wrote this knowing that he would not do the film. Why? Uh isn't that like a great dad to write the best part ever and be like, I know you don't want to do it. It was probably something a bit insidious <laughs> in my, when I was there. I think I've been busted, I will admit. No, um, I, I, he, he, for a, an actor so early in his career has worked with a remarkable list of directors. Um, and um, none of them get to be his father. And, um, and he just wants me to be his dad. He doesn't want me to be his director. And I respect that. Um, but he heard that Julia wanted him to do the film. He, he, I, I, we wanted to make this film as quickly as we could. It's that great John Wooden line, be quick, but don't hurry. So we were trying to be quick <laughs> because I wanted as soon as we had it done to put it out. I didn't want to worry about any of the things that I mean, we're here at the Academy. I just, I, I just want this film out so that people, it can be a part of a conversation that, like Julia said, that we need to be having. So he wasn't available. And I knew, and I was writing it. He, so even if I wanted him to do it, he wouldn't be available. When I met with Julia, she said, Lucas needs to do the film. I had a list of actors. <laughs> and she never even let me show her the list. Um, so he heard that, she really wanted him to do the film. The, the, the play he was to be doing on Broadway, he's doing a different play on Broadway now, but he was supposed to be doing an, another play a year or ago. Mm. Um, that play went away. So he, he became available, and he did start to get texts from, from these prominent young actors who were going to come in and audition saying, did your dad wrote this? <laughs> First of all, I was like, well, yeah, but I guess, anyway, they were like, he, your dad wrote a really good script, but I think what he really wanted was to read it in to support me, to say, uh, good job, keep going. And when he read it, and, and I think, honestly, when he considered that I'm Carol Hedge's son, my mother was an alcoholic, she walked out the door when I was set. Alcohol walked her out the door mm. when I was seven, and I didn't know her sober till I was 15. Mm. Um, we nearly lost a relative um, of mine. I think, truthfully, because Lucas had just done Boy Erased, he, which he's, I think, amazing in, and he needed a break, but he, I think he really felt that this story and mattered and but he also he was very cognizant of it for the healing aspects in my own family mm. that Carol Hedge's grandson Carol Hedge's who was nearly dead when I was 15 before she went to the third rehab that my sister went through rehab with her mm. my non-drinking sister mm. who had cancer at the time mm. went through I mean it's like amazing story Can I've you never imagine what his Christmas is going to be yeah. like <laughs> yeah, yeah. But anyway, I'm, this is too long of an answer, and I'd really rather hear Julia talk. So I'm going <laughs> to um, quickly say that, that he gave me an amazing gift. And I love watching these two actors together. It was Newman and Redford. It was Maffow and Lemon. Lem Lem it was 
And and they were the thing that, and I, I really just have to say that um, I, I I studied with Sanford Meisner. I I I I'm not a good actor, but I know great actors, and I know when they're great. And the greatest actors are generous. And Julia was so generous with Lucas, and he was generous with her. Every major scene in this movie, I could have given you six or seven different versions of that scene. Mm. If I have any regret, it's that I didn't have the capacity to see that they'd nailed it by take two. Mm. And a lot of times, I apologize publicly. My regret. I'd say, <laughs> why don't we do it again? Sometimes it was because it was just so friggin' enjoyable <laughs> to watch them go at it. Julia, one of the reasons I think this is one of my favorite performances that I've ever seen you give is it's Mama Bear epitomized and and I like that ferocity and fragility that's a great combination what allowed you to find that and did you feel good as you were doing it like do you feel like okay I'm kind of firing on the all the cylinders or do you never allow yourself oh, yeah, to I'm feel like, that way I am nailing it <laughs> day 18 nailed it <laughs> day 27 nailed it <laughs> That never happens. It never happens. That's the whole, that's the carrot that dangles for 30 years. Yeah. You're waiting for someone to get inside your head and go, yeah, you nailed it. And you go, yeah, mm. it never happens. But that's the good news. <laughs> the, um, you know, for me, the best part was that going into this endeavor, I knew we had the document. I knew it was all there on the pages and really it had so much to do with Lucas and myself and which had so much to do with Peter letting me in those whatever how many few few days that we had to film mm. let me be the parent you know Lucas called Peter Peter and I called Peter Peter and um, and and somehow Peter knew how to not get between the mother and the son, and still talk to the actors. So that, to me, was very special and unique, and I adore Lucas in every way and felt completely safe with him, and I felt that I could, um, you know, hug him and kiss him and punch him in the face and do all the things required, and Peter just let us do that. So that's that's how we made this movie in the freezing cold Winter. What a pleasure it is to be with all of you guys. So please help me thank Teddy thank and you guys. Thank, you. Thank, you. thank you so much. Out.